Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Ty with Mojo Plays, and welcome to the Mojo Plays Review Recap. Whenever we upload a review, you can leave a question or comment in that review's comment section, so I may read them off here and respond to them on the show. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Folks, the purpose of Review Recap is so that I can answer any criticisms I've made and explain further and defend my statements or maybe even make a change to my opinions. Surprisingly, we will be witnessing the latter today as Miles Morales has kind of grown on me a bit more, more than the initial playthrough. Just to give you a bit of context behind the review, I had 100%ed Miles Morales before I wrote the review. As of today, I have finished my third playthrough on New Game Plus Hardest Difficulty, and I have popped the Platinum Trophy, making Miles Morales my 76th Platinum Trophy. Next will be Bug Snacks. But that being said, I've come around to changing my opinion on a couple of things, specifically the story. Now, in my review, I criticized Miles Morales for not doing enough interesting things with the narrative. Personally, I felt that it was very predictable and middle of the lane, played a little too safe. It was very easy to figure out the Tinkerer's identity well before it was even revealed, and all it took was just a little foreshadowing through color theory and some exposed hair in the character model during certain shots. Thank you. Really, it was incredibly easy to figure out. One of the least satisfying plot twists I've come across. And then, of course, you have cartoony corporate overlord Krieger, which I could have cared less about. But, uh, looks like you beat us to it. I wanted to thank you. Both of you. However, I feel that I may not have given the game enough credit. So during my second and third playthrough, I noticed that the story centers around the phrase that the game uses throughout its marketing. Be greater. Be yourself. It's, uh, it's a lesson that Miles struggles with throughout the story. He refers to himself as the other Spider-Man, he panics in sticky situations, there's a lot of self-doubt within him. As somebody who's gone through imposter syndrome a handful of times, Miles' journey was a bit more relatable to me than I had originally noticed. Hey, look, I got nothing on the OG. I want to point out one last thing before we get into your questions and comments. So the footage you're going to see in this review recap is from my third playthrough, which was done after the version 1.05 update. I can confirm that the PS4 version of the game is way more stable than it was at launch. I didn't see any freezing character models and cutscenes this time, so I would like to retract that criticism from the original review. That being said, you can expect to see Miles Morales on our upcoming list of best games of 2020. But that being said, let's get on to your questions and comments. I kind of suspected when I saw the news yesterday. Jonathan Miska, or Miska, says, I really liked Spider-Man Miles Morales. Obviously, it's not as good as the original, but what were you expecting? It's not a full-fledged sequel. It's more of a spin-off episode. By the way, I would say that the Tinkerer is the main villain, not Krieger. I can see where you're coming from, Jonathan. After all, the antagonist is usually someone who is constantly at odds with the protagonist. That's just a high school literature lesson I admittedly didn't take into account. And even when the Tinkerer knows what they're doing is wrong, they're constantly fighting Miles, whereas Krieger is just some backseat crook that kind of brings Miles and Tinkerer together. So I, I, can, I can understand that assessment. In regards to what I was expecting, I, I honestly can't tell you. I've played games that are like Miles Morales in terms of size and scope. Like, I've played Infamous First Light, which is another game I've platinumed. And that game satisfied me the same way Miles did. It's got great combat, solid gameplay, not so much in the narrative department. I don't know, I guess I was just hoping to see more villains that were specific to Miles and could have been more entertaining than just Rhino, Tinkerer, and Krieger. Hello, tiny spiders. Sheem Almighty says, so y'all expected it to be exactly the same as a next-gen console version? Well, not necessarily, Sheem. I was expecting maybe less particle effects, but the only major difference between PS4 and PS5 is processing power. And even so, the cutscenes shouldn't have been freezing up as often as they were, especially when there wasn't much happening within the cutscenes. But thankfully, version 1.05 seems to have fixed the stability issues, so as I said earlier, I retract the criticism. Well, quick then. A lot quicker now. Tristan Scatliff writes in with, This dude needs the PS5 version stat, and you damn right I do. I certainly do. 
And I've actually asked Ricky about the quality of the PS5 version. He's told me that the PS5 version is really dang good and it's the best way to play the game. Apparently he had gone into photo mode and he zoomed into Miles' suit as close as possible. And he was telling me there, there wasn't a single pixel on screen, not a single one. Of course, you're only going to experience this depending on what kind of TV you have, but clearly the game is best played on PS5, which isn't surprising. Even I said the game was not made with PS4 in mind. Brian Daniel writes in with, I actually found the smaller scope of the story to be more engaging. Some things that were predictable didn't make the experience less exciting as the twists were still powerful for Miles, and I was truly invested in his story and his rise as a hero. The first game felt to me more like your standard MCU blockbuster fare. I felt the emotional beats hit harder in Miles Morales due to the tighter pacing. I will give Miles Morales the, uh, the scope, the scope card. I'll, I will definitely praise a game for a smaller, more focused campaign, as long as it provides me with fun side missions and collectibles, which I did have fun with that. The activities in the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app, those were... I could dig those. But it can get a little repetitive in, in Miles Morales just because there's not much challenge in finding collectibles. The collectibles get really monotonous sometimes. In regards to your comment about the first game being standard MCU blockbuster fare, as you put it, maybe that's why I enjoyed the first game more than Miles. Insomniac's first Spider-Man game hit me in a similar way that the first Batman Arkham game did and the first Iron Man movie did. At the time that those movies and games came out, they were moments that showed us the people who worked on the projects actually gave a shit. They cared about the source material and they wanted to give something that was really, really good. Now that Insomniac has shown us what superhero games look like in a post-Batman Arkham world, we're kind of in this weird period of limbo, you know? How are we going to make this better than the previous game? What can we do to make it distinguishable from other superhero games? That's one thing that the first Spider-Man game kind of faltered in, is that a lot of people were comparing it to Batman Arkham, and I get it. I can see the similarities. There's enough to make it distinguishable, but we gotta, we gotta tread lightly, you know? There's also the question of how do we incorporate the character's powers into the game without straying from source material or making gameplay too repetitive. Jay writes in and says, It is quite obvious when that the narrator is just reading a script that he didn't write when words are mispronounced on a number of occasions. Jay, I've been reading and doing voiceover for my reviews since Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Just about every review code we nab, we have a whole lower third graphic saying reviewed by Ty in every review video that I've worked on, even the ones that I didn't do voiceover for. So needless to say, if you see my dumb face pop up anywhere in the video, or you hear my voice, you can bet as much money as you want, your entire life savings even, that I had some hand in doing something. Kind of a working vacation for us. Oh, man. Our last commenter comes from Varkolak2020, waiting for a review for Sackboy A Big Adventure. I'm sorry to tell you this, Vark, but I don't think I'll be doing a review for Sackboy A Big Adventure. I will, though, give you a quick review for Sackboy. It's a charming platformer, it runs well on PS4, and it almost makes me wish I continued my aspirations as an animator. I actually used to want to work in character animation, and Sackboy is that type of game where I sit back and I'm like, dang, I wish I could have worked on this game. I'm not a fan of the copyrighted music as much as I enjoyed listening to Uptown Funk for like the billionth time, but Sackboy A Big Adventure, well worth the price of admission. Anyways, folks, that does it for the Mojo Plays review recap. I know this was a short one. Figured I'd give you guys a break from my voice after the previous one. I'd like to thank you all for leaving your questions and comments. And if you're curious to see what else I may be playing or when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter at GhostwriterTyler. And until next time, I wish you all the very best, and a happy holidays. See you in a few weeks, Spider-Man. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.